What's up, YouTube? We got the new police command from Greenlight. I am so excited. 164 scale. It's going to look great with all my NYPD cars I collect. And um, this could go, you know, many decades back and forth. Uh, it'll go with the cars. So, love it. I absolutely love it. They went to that shield a long time ago. So, really, you can use many different types of NYPD cars. Building's a little small, but it's got a lot of detail. We're going to take a look at it. And then I got some of my NYPD collection out finally, so we can look at some of those cars too. And uh, really close to my heart. Love them. But anyway, let's take a look. So, much like the gas station and the garage and all the workshop stuff they've been doing, there is die cast elements to this diorama. Um, the pieces on this particular one would be the roof here and then the gate. The gate is also die cast and it moves, goes back and forth just like um, one would when you have an impound lot. So you have that secure lot and then if you look closely it'll say police impound right on the sticker. How they do the box is the, it is all together. Uh, doesn't have the wall that comes off like the garage series does, uh, but the roof does come off. Doors are fixed, you can't move them. Clear pla plastic. I'm going to take the roof off so the light shines through. You'll be able to see it better. This is heavy. This basically base almost as heavy or heavier than this whole thing here. <laughs> this is a very big solid piece of metal, I'm going to tell you. And uh, it is die cast. So that's kind of nice. It makes it a little bit more special. You can get this online. It's pretty reasonable. It doesn't have to be uh, an incredible amount of money, but it does look good with the cars. And we're going to look at that in a minute, too. This is painted here. And then this is the police. And this that's all sticker. All that's a sticker. It does have windows, so it has some dimension to it on the side. They kind of. Um, up their game a little bit in terms of what these buildings look like because the garages are just kind of boxes but there's windows in there and we'll look at the interior in a minute the back is cool too um, I was thinking about this back you know it's actually good for like if you're gonna take a photo of a car or something it's kind of a cool area so don't forget about the back actually and then the side they paint the kind of like a fake chain link and then we got the gate and the gate moves pretty good um, better with two hands definitely this is tight but it, it is uh, well done it's not gonna fall out and you can see how it goes take the camera up and over you'll see they have that linoleum tile down by the detective desk or the sergeant or whoever's sitting in there today and uh, it's got that speckled floor and then it has like just a printed desk so it, you know it looks good bars plastic be cool if they're metal but they're not doesn't move to my knowledge I kinda play with it a little bit um, but it does have a bunk bed for your inmate or two or ever how many you want to fit in there if it's a busy day probably 20 guys <laughs> or whatever but uh, yeah so there's our they call it a central command. Um, I mean, really, this is like a little guard shack, but uh, it looks good. I mean, you don't want something too big, especially if you have a lot of cars and not a little bit. So it'll probably just be like a nice little centerpiece. It does operate wood. We got a little impound unit here. This little Jeep just runs right up in there. You can close the gate on it. The guy's got to come and pay his fine. But. Uh, it's cool and it's got the bumpers so we got this 77 fury we got a bunch of these furies one of my favorites obviously but uh, 77 fury fifth precinct so this car came out before this did so they kinda kept it together on some of them we got this auxiliary unit another 77 fury car I like this car too yeah uh, NYPD always had the white back then so that's a cool looking car too I got a bunch of these there's the fury rear end there and uh, you know this it's put them up here it looks pretty good we do a little bit higher shot Let's see if I can get it pulled up yeah 
So yeah, I like the Fury. I mean, that was another good casting. And I might note while we're on the subject, since we already looked at the the house a little bit here. I mean, look at this. I want to show you the difference here. They did a little bit of tampo run. They did the white car after. And you'll see the grill. Just so you know. It's done a lot better on a blue car. Does have Plymouth on there. I mean that looks good. Both hoods open. Probably got a 318 or 360, something like that. Some of these cars have 400s. I doubt these cars had sixes. These type of cars would, but they definitely had the small eight, uh, eight in them. Uh, you could on the 77 if you wanted. They still had the big, big 440, but that was like a. You know, they want to run that in the city, but you could get a 440 still um, up until 78 in these little Chryslers. You know, these are medium size by then. They still made the full size car too in that time period. It would be a Grand Fury, or they had the Monaco full size. That car would be Royal Monaco, which Greenlight did one a couple of scales. Um, I got a Chicago car. That's the full size. So yeah, there's your Furies. And then another good vehicle that looks good with this is the van. You got your motor transport van. This is, uh, what is this? They call it, yeah, it's 87, not an 86. It's 87 GMC Vandura. They'd use these vans a lot of time. Chevrolet, their van was the extended wheelbase van. The middle of the van was longer. That was Chevy's hallmark. They didn't extend the back like Ford and Dodge did. But, uh, so really, a lot of these vans, they either would have had a van body on them, or they would have, um, they would have had a stretch frame, would have been a three-quarter ton, one-ton chassis, usually, but, uh, if they had a half-ton like this, it would be for, like, a different purpose. So, that's my piece on that. But, it still looks good, it's got the early graphics, it's got the light bar that they used back then and the van ones were shorter they weren't long so they got that right got the grill done real good it's all silver out like that unreal life and uh, they instantly faded to, out too so they got that kind of down the only thing about it they use the same casting as GMC uh, for A team and they, they even though they changed the fender flares it's still, the construction is the same so if you look at this van you know, it looks like it's got a body kit, sort of. So, you know, and the rally wheels, they're trying to do rally wheels. It's not completely the best. You know, it looks good. I mean, it's nice. It's not completely accurate, but, you know, if you change the wheels on this or put a slight lift on it, it'll look a little bit better. But again, the vans usually were long wheelbase vans. So, then they had the step back there. They usually had the cutout step. You know. But, uh, I mean, it's cool. It looks good. You got it right here. Another rare car. Another Fury. I have two Furies. Pontiac. So, this Pontiac here, 1976 Pontiac Le Mans Enforcer. And these cars are real hot numbers, too. They could come with sixes, but, uh, you know, they had small V8s and big block. Could get a 400 Pontiac in that car. So, really good. Colin A body. So, you know, it was a pretty fairly light. Definitely probably lighter than Dodge. And uh, this car probably had a little bit less power. But I forget what the NYPD uses these for pursuit or patrol. Or I can't remember. You know, typically if you're going down a body style or a body size, you want the economy. So I'm sure they put these cars more towards economy. But this was uh, used by the NYPD. They used these cars one year. They, back in the 70s, I guess they would have you know their contract let them buy cars each year so they would try different stuff because it only had to last a year for a purchase so definitely a little bit different how they ran things back then custom you know the NYPD painted these cars custom it was their own blue pretty much and uh, that basically made them basically go all to all white because it was still custom these cars and it, it adds a lot of expense when you're doing them that way but it lasted for a long time I mean basically into the 90s they had these two-tone cars Pontiac's done real good just like Sheriff car 
I got the Smokey and the Bandit. So I got Buford's car. The only difference is it's got full wheel covers, which they did good too. But the Pontiac dog dish wheels, they look great. They got a good dish to them too. The wheel offset looks good. So, I mean, the Pontiac looks great. And uh, it stacks up nice again with uh, the police department. So whatever you got going on with these vehicles, it always looks great. I love it. And the last one I got um, vehicle-wise for the roundup here for my NYPD is a little bit newer vehicle, which would be the uh, International Stake Body. Again, a, ve a vehicle like this used in the NYPD forever and ever. They always had big trucks. They had to carry these barriers around for all the activity that happens around the city on a 24-hour basis. So, got to be able to put up your barriers, get a get traffic flow going. And um, again, yeah, got this here heavy truck, stake bed removes, diecast cab, and the chassis. Chassis die cast too. Rolls out good, got rubber tires, you know, painted front end. It's got very nice mirrors. So I mean that looks good too. The only thing I want to add though, when you're on the lookout for these Plymouths, I think this is the only one I've ever seen with a screw chassis on it. So keep your lookout for that. These are fun because then you'll be able to uh customize them. But yeah, this is NYPD. Awesome awesome set and uh, highly recommend it and if you're out there on the internet looking for it um, here's the box so it's not an exclusive or anything your, your retailer or hobby store might have it too but eBay eBay or the internet fastest easiest yep but yeah till next time